Okay, let's uh, let's review uh, some of the concepts that are going to be on the exam next time. And there's two major ideas here. One of them is uh, centripetal acceleration and force, and the other one is uh, gravitation, uh, is gravity. So let's uh, review those. If you have an object that's moving in a circle, and it's moving with constant speed, that's called uniform circular motion. Okay. And so if you have an object that's whizzing around in a circle, like this, well, a, an object has to be forced to stay in a circle. So there has to be, if you were to draw, uh, there has to be some kind of force uh, pushing it towards the center of that circle. So when the object, if the object moves, let's say the object is over here, that force is still, it's the same magnitude, should make that a little longer then, but it's uh, now pointed in a different direct, well, it's pointed towards the center. And that's why we call it uh, center seeking force. So we have uh, what we call centripetal acceleration. And we said that A sub C is equal to the speed that we're traveling uh, squared over R. So this is one of our basic equations. So this should definitely be on your equation list. I can say, what is the acceleration? Now, if you want the centripetal force, you just multiply that by the mass. So that's just the mass of the object times v squared over r. And this is the force that you feel pushing on you when you, when you go around a turn in your car and you feel like you're getting smushed against the, 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 you know, your car. That's your car pushing you towards the center of the circle uh, to change your velocity, uh, the direction of your velocity. In fact, remember that centripetal accelerations, they don't change your speed, they change the direction of your velocity vector. Now, uh, there's two kinds of basic problems I could give you. Um, there's the whirligig problem. I might give you a whirligig problem since we did that lab. So here we've got um, an object with a certain mass and, uh, and we have a, a, a tension force. So if this is a free body diagram of the object, then the tension force is the um, uh, centripetal force. And so you can solve for various things. But uh, study the uh, Whirligig lab, and uh, I could give you a, a Whirligig lab type problem. Um, and, then, uh, and then we have a car moving in a circle. So if you have a car, let's say uh, we've got a circle. We're looking at kind of an oblique view looking down. And uh, so we've got, oh yeah, we haven't sung happy birthday yet. Okay, so we've got, thank you. Um, so gravity's pulling the car down. So that's mg of the car, right? We've got a normal force holding the car, uh, supporting the weight of the car. So the normal force is just equal to the weight of the car. And it's the friction between your wheels and the road Uh, that is making you go in a circle. So in this case, the friction force is the centripetal force. So I'll, I, I might give you one or both of these kind of problems. Uh, and, uh, and remember that if you're dealing with, with this kind of a problem, don't forget that the force of friction or the maximum possible force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. So, uh, so you'll be using that. And I think there's a, a, a couple problems that we did that were very similar to that. So I'm thinking of giving you a Whirligig problem, and I'm thinking of giving you a car moving in a circle problem. So got to give you problems. Life is full of problems. All right. So the next, uh, the next big topic that we're going to cover is gravitation. line down the middle.
circle here. And if you've got two objects, like this could be a, a, a star, and this could be a, a planet, then uh, they're pulling on each other with, with equal and opposite force. And the magnitude of that force has been determined to be, uh, good old Isaac Newton figured this out, uh, yeah, but you need a constant of nature, the gravitational constant. And then you need the mass of the star. We'll call that big M. The mass of the planet, we'll call it little m. Sometimes this is a planet and a satellite. Just two objects. Um, could be two people out in space. You know, very, very small forces involved. But And then uh, divided by r squared. Now r is the distance from the center of the star out to the center of the planet. Or, the, you know, the distance between the centers of the two objects. And it's an attractive force. Uh, now, the hardest thing about these gravitation problems is the numbers are really, really big. You have to use scientific notation. So, between now and the exam, practice using your calculator. Bring the calculator you know how to use to class. Because if you have to borrow one and then you're going to be like, you don't know how it works and, and all that, yeah. So bring, no, Lily's smiling over there. Bring your the calculator that you know how to use to class so that you can get through it. Okay. Um, so if if you want to know, like if this is the the, the like the, the a planet, and like this might be the Earth, and uh, here's uh, an astronaut floating around in space. Uh, what's the acceleration of gravity on that planet? Well, this is big M, this is little m. So if you, we know what the force is. And so if you say, um, well, the force of gravity is equal to mg, like we want to know what is the force of gravity on this astronaut here. Well, this is the mass of the astronaut. And that's equal to the force of gravity. Well, the force of gravity, we just said, is equal to g m m over r squared so if you just divide both sides by the mass of the astronaut you'll get g g is the acceleration of gravity we sometimes we quite often call it the gravitational field strength how many newtons of force per kilogram of mass notice that we have when we divide um when we divided both sides by the mass right this turns out to be, um, well, this is newtons, and this is kilograms. So it's like newtons per kilogram. And if you reduce that out, you get meters per second squared. So this gives you the acceleration of gravity uh, at some point. Then you have um, uh, circular orbits. So if I've got a, let's say, the Earth. Or it could be that, that asteroid or something like that. We're in orbit around the Earth. So the Earth has a big mass m. Our satellite has a little mass, little m. And we want to know, OK, well, um, what's, the, uh, what's going on here? Well, if, if I look at this mass right here, well, this is r. Uh, fr from here to here, we call this r. That little r is the, the orbit of the, the the orbital radius and um, and we can say that that little r is equal to the radius of the planet plus our height above the surface so let me rewrite that r is equal to r plus h now the only time you'll use this is if in the problem I ask you what you know what height above the surface is the satellite traveling and then you would just solve for h. You know, you would take the orbital radius that you calculate or whatever, subtract from it the radius of the planet, and you've got the height above the surface. So you, you'll probably need uh, to know that. Then, uh, now, if you're in a circular orbit, if you're in a circular orbit, so here's the planet. 
And let's let's do an oblique view, like we're in a circular orbit around here. Here we've got a that force of gravity acting on. Well, that force of gravity is now making you go in a circle. Uh, and so it's a centripetal force. So if the force of gravity that's equal to mg, that's equal to gmm over r squared. But if if this object, this little object m, is in circular orbit, then it has a centripetal force. And then we use this right here um, to solve for V. Now we did that. I'm not going to do it right now. It's, it's easy though. So V is equal to the orbital velocity is equal to GM over R. Now this R right here, this little R, that's the orbital radius from the center of the Earth or whatever we're in orbit around out to the um, out to the uh, satellite. So you'll you'll need this one, and it's just directly derived from that. And then, um, oh, then what do we need? Uh, oh, we also know that the speed of the satellite uh, moving around the planet. Is also if it's in a circular orbit, well, it's got a circumference of two pi r, right? That's the distance around a circle, going around once, and then you divide, and the time it takes to go around once, we call that the period. Now, uh, in the book, uh, there are a lot of uh, fancy equations where they com uh, they take this and combine it with that and solve for the period or solve for the radius, and you can use those. Those are all good, as long as you know what you're doing. But I just prefer to use these two together. Usually, I, I it, like if they ask for the orbital period, I'll usually use this equation here to solve for the velocity. And once I know the velocity, I use this equation to solve for the period, rather than try to do it all in one step, because I think it's easier. Uh, it's easier for me, and I think it's it's easier for you to do it that way. And that's pretty much it now. I think what I'm going to do now is make an equation list. And you're allowed to have an equation list, right, for uh, this. So uh, let's let's kind of do that right now in your notes just for this. We have um, so an equation list. And uh, this would be centripetal acceleration equals v squared over r. Centripetal force equals mv squared over r. Um, remember that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. Uh, and remember that uh, the speed going around a circle is equal to 2 pi r over the period. Now that's you have to know the assumptions for these, right? This is assuming that you're moving in a circle with constant speed. Um, then uh, with gravity, you need to know the force of gravity equals g mm over r squared. Sometimes r is equal to the radius of the planet plus our height above the planet if you're in a circular orbit. Yes? It, it, yes, it is. It is the orbital radius. Um, now you can apply this to a car moving in a circle, right? If, if a car is driving in a circle, or the Whirligig problem, or that rubber stopper is just going around your head, um, th that works as well for that. But that this is the radius of the circle that you're making. So um, now this is, and and for planetary type problems, uh, gravitation problems, this is that that R is the same as that R right here. It's just the radius from the center of the circle to the uh, outside of the circle, and then um, and then we said, well, actually, let me let me write rewrite this. The force of gravity equals mg equals g m m over r squared equals 
mv squared over r, and this is for uh, circular orbits only. Make sure you understand that this only works for circular orbits. That gives us the orbital velocity equation, which is the square root of g m over r. Make sure you know that this mass is the mass of the planet. Okay. And, uh, and there we go. I, can't, I think we're, we're good. Oh, one uh, other thing to put on your equation list. G equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. You need that. Now, for planets and stuff, uh, I'm going to, like if it's the Earth or Mars or whatever, I'm going to give you the radius and the mass of the planet. I mean, I'm going to give you the other stuff. All the stuff you need will be given. Um, and if, if you forget your equation list and you need capital G, I'll even give that to you. You know, I don't expect you to memorize this stuff, but it's nice to have it there if you need it. Okay, now what you need to do as you're studying this, you need to make sure that... Um, you know what all these variables are. And the biggest problem students have is confusing the big R, the capital R, which is the radius of the planet, with uh, lowercase r, which is the orbital radius, the radius of the circle that it's going in. So make sure you keep those all straight. But if you know how to use these, this is, this is all you need. It's going to be a, sh a fairly short test. I think four problems, 40 points, like a, almost like a quest. Any questions? That is all. Oh. 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 That's all. <laughs>